What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you the three most powerful MIDI programming tips I can give you in Cubase 12. And before we begin this video, I want to bring your attention to my brand new one-on-one -on -one consulting service where you can now book your time with me and get your specific questions answered. Since there are many questions I get asked on my videos and I cannot get to all of them, this is the chance for you to get your questions answered and more. So let's get right to it. So of course, this is the workflow that works the best for me. I like programming my MIDI, but I like doing it with efficiency and speed. So these are the three things I started doing to speed up my MIDI programming chops. So let's go ahead and dive into number one, and it has to do with quantizing. If you've done MIDI programming before, you know quantizing is a big, big pain when it comes to organizing the piano roll after you record in some kind of MIDI notes for your production. Now I'm going to show you a quick way so that you don't have to spend so much time quantizing. And even if there are mistakes, it's very easy to fix because it's lined up with bars and beats. So the first thing we're going to talk about is quantizing settings. So if you don't see the quantize up here, you're going to go ahead and hit the gearbox on the right side, and then you're going to turn on grid type and quantize. The second thing you're going to do is you need to figure out what or what is the value note that you're playing in the track. What is it mainly using? For me, I'm going to be using mostly eighth notes. So I'm going to leave it at eighth notes. And now I'm going to record because I'm going to reveal a secret setting that maybe most people don't know of. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. So I'm going to go and record the track right now. Now that I finished recording that drum track, I'm going to open up the piano roll. And now you're going to see something that you probably won't see if you don't have this setting turned on. And it's that automatically all of the notes are quantized and I did not need to go in and quantize it. Now, how did I do this? Usually you would have to hit select all and then press Q on your keyboard and quantize it because some notes might have shifted here and there, but they're perfectly aligned. So I just saved that step and I'm going to show you now where that setting is. You're going to go up to transport and then you're going to go down to where it says MIDI record mode and then you're going to turn on auto quantize in record. If you don't turn on this setting, then it will not auto quantize for you. Therefore, you're going to have to go into the piano roll and quantize it so that it is quantized. So now that my drum track is quantized, I can now press play. And we have a perfectly in time drum that I can use for my recordings. Because again, you don't want to have messy MIDI notes. You don't want to have notes that are in between the bars. You don't want to have notes in between the lines or the beats. You want to always have them right on the line. And no, it's not going to make it sound robotic. It's not going to make it sound, you know, too perfect. Because in reality, the samples itself aren't perfect. And most of what we hear in standard broadcast quality is 100% quantized, especially for popular music and rock tracks that are releasing today. So right there, I just gave you two of the most powerful MIDI programming techniques you can use inside of Cubase. So again, the first thing is make sure your quantize is set correctly. If you're using 16th notes, then of course you can adjust it here and use 16th notes. So this is the power of choosing your quantize settings before you do your MIDI programming. So keep that in mind. I would much rather go in and change the quantize settings and then record then have to record everything and then go in, select all quantize, and then also run the risk that not all of the notes are going to quantize perfectly. The third tip that I can give you for powerful MIDI programming is if you're doing stuff with, let's say, strings or orchestral instruments. They have a slight delay in their sound, meaning if you quantize it to beat one, you won't actually hear the note on beat one. The note would actually start kind of like on the end of one or even two sometimes because the patches have an attack, a very slow attack 
for the note to be heard so that you can get all the details inside of the string samples or brass or any orchestral element. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute this drum track and I'm just gonna create a nice violin melody line and you're gonna see how I'm gonna program this so that I can still quantize all of my notes but at the same time they can still land on the beat and that's using the track delay which we'll check out in just a second. So here I have my violin sample, and now I'm going to go in and check to see if all of the notes were correctly adjusted or if I have to modify some elements. So just by looking at the grid, as you can see that there are some adjustments that need to be made, but check this out. They are already quantized to a line. So that's why using auto quantize is super important, even if things happen just like this. So all I need to do is highlight the five notes that weren't, and just move it to the side. And now they're aligned on a beat. If I don't have the auto quantize on, then I'll have those notes in between lines and then I would have to adjust it first to a line or quantize it first and then move it around so that it can land on a line. So all of that legwork is done for you and now you don't even need to worry about snapping it on a line or a grid. So now that they're aligned, I'm also gonna show you a fourth tip. So let's actually make this a bonus tip in this video and it's using the legato mode and then also delete any overlapping notes. Now the way that we do that is we need to create key commands for this and then create a macro for it. So if you don't know how to create key commands or macros, I'm gonna go ahead and link the videos on the top right corner right now. One video on setting up the actual key commands and then another video on creating the macros. But if I just hit one key command on my keyboard, which is control and A, you're gonna see that the overlaps have disappeared and then this one had lengthened to the end of the region with a click of a button. So there's your bonus tip on another very powerful MIDI programming tip. And now if I play this back, you're gonna see that now it's going to play back. Not in time because we still haven't added the track delay, but at least we have some kind of time. So you heard that it was almost half a beat late. So now what we need to do is we need to go and highlight the actual violin one track and then go here to the inspector track in the left. And if you don't see this, just open it up by clicking this left box right here. And then you're going to grab the time delay and you're gonna push it back, meaning you're going to delay this track a little bit so that now it plays earlier instead of playing later. And I'm gonna go to a number that I know works which is negative 136, and here it is in time now. So now even your strings, even your brass or any orchestral elements are now in time, but they're also quantized to the beat. You want to make sure that you're using the track delay instead of moving the notes around because if you're trying to, let's say, print this music out and give it to a musician, exporting the MIDI with the notes not quantized will be a mess to clean up when you transfer this over to a program like Finale or Sibelius or even Dorico. Even inside of Cubase, we have a notation software and it will be a mess there as well. So you wanna make sure that all of your orchestral elements are quantized and if you need to do the track delay, you do it on the track itself. And this is like the magical sweet spot I've seen that works for most legato patches. So really quick, let me show you where you can find the key command for using the legato and deleting the overlaps like I showed you here. So if I actually undo this, Look how this note right here is overlapping. Look how this note is overlapping. And then we have this note that didn't reach the end of this box here. And then we also have this one that didn't touch the end of the region. With the click of a button, I can create a legato, which means it's gonna forcefully attach all of the notes to the end of the value before the other note starts. And it's also going to delete any overlaps of any note inside of the MIDI region. So I put the macro on control A, so if I do that key command, you're gonna see that it deletes the overlap, this snap to the bar, and then this also snap to the end of the region. Let's show you where this exists. If you go to edit 
and we go down to key commands. The key command window is going to come up and notice how I just used this macro. So Cubase just remembered this was the last thing I did. And look at the setting right here. So this is found inside of the MIDI sections. So if we open up the MIDI folder and then go down to delete overlaps poly. So the reason why it's poly is because there's multiple notes. I can also grab, let's say the legato section, which is found here. This is the legato. So at least you can see the location where these two commands exist inside of Cubase. So here's the delete overlap and legato. And what I did was I created a macro and called it legato overlap. And there it is legato and delete overlaps. Now, if I open up the macro section inside of the key command list, you're going to see that in the legato overlap, control A is the key command for that. So it did both of these steps with one key command, and that is what a macro is. So again, if you don't know how to use this and you want to learn how to set it up properly, I'm going to link those two videos so that you could see it. It's the key command video and also the macro video. So this video is titled three, but I guess it is four most powerful MIDI programming tips that I can give you. And this saves me a ton of time, especially when I have deadlines, especially when I need to create music on the fly. I have this already set and done and it does all of the legwork for me. So I just need to go in and do minor changes to my MIDI notes instead of having to go to each note or resizing it with the, you know, pulling the notes out or contracting them or having to move notes around or whatever the case may be, quantize, all of the legwork is done. And now I can just go and continue creating music with speed and efficiency. If you have any questions throughout the video, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios website. I have a Cubase tech course. So if you are brand new to Cubase and you want to learn the interface, how everything works, where the buttons are, I have a course dedicated just to that. So you can go ahead and check that in the link in the description at the John Moon Studios website. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you guys soon.